millions of acres of land in the West and the Midwest, which meant that it was willing to undergird its white peasants from Europe with an economic floor. But not only did they give the land, they built land-grant colleges with government money to teach them how to farm. Not only that, they provided county agents to further their expertise in farming. Not only that, they provided low interest rates in order that they could mechanize their farms. Not only that, today many of these people are receiving millions of dollars in federal subsidies not to farm, and they are the very people telling the black man that he ought to lift himself by his own bootstraps. And this is what we are faced with, and this is a reality. Now, when we come to Washington in this campaign, we are coming to get our check. Our destiny is tied up in the destiny of America. Before the Pilgrim Fathers landed at Plymouth, we were here. Before Jefferson etched across the pages of history the majestic words of the Declaration of Independence, we were here. Before the beautiful words of the Star Spangled Banner were written, we were here. For more than two centuries, our forebears labored here without wages. They made cotton king. They built the homes of their masters in the midst of the most humiliating and oppressive conditions, yet out of a bottomless vitality. perda da sua história, que é uma perda científica, uma perda acadêmica, teses de mestrado, de doutorado, que estavam em andamento, estão sendo perdidas ali dentro. Então, uma perda inestimável, um pedaço da nossa casa que está queimando, né, e que aparentemente vai queimar até o chão. Então, a gente se sente completamente devastado pelo que está acontecendo. <música> Diligently doing some research on the fire in the Brazil Rio de Janeiro Museum last year, 2018, I come across an article that states there may be an element of racial politics in this. Told in school to think of themselves as a blend of indigenous, European, and African cultures. Many Brazilians have difficulty embracing their mixed origins. The National Museum was the leading custodian of this identity. The advertisement and the repository up for its history and truth. All of science will suffer from the great loss of this collection. But in Brazil, the most profound suffering may well be the loss of history and the true heritage. Museum century old Torah not burned in Rio de Janeiro blaze. Brazil National Museum said Wednesday that century old Torah scrolls considered to be some of Judaism's oldest documents have been moved before a massive fire ravaged the place and gutted out much of the largest collection of national history artifacts in Latin America. Questions about the fate of the scrolls have swirled since Sunday night's blaze. At the museum, which used to be the home of Brazil's royal family, it made an ongoing investigations and unable to access much of the now destroyed museum, officials have been reluctant to give any account of how specific artifacts fared in the fire or disclosed any information on other materials. Most of the laboratories were lost. The research of some vessels were lost. 
Brazil, indigenous knowledge also has suffered. It housed world-renowned collection of indigenous objects as well as many audio recordings of indigenous languages from all over Brazil. Some of these recordings are now lost. Those exhibits included Egyptian mummies, an 11,500 year old skull named Muzia, which was believed to be the oldest discovered in Americas. The museum's herbarium, its library, its main library, and some of its vertebrates were housed in a different touched by the fire, but together, these reportedly accounts for just 10% of the museum's collection. So let me get this right. This portion of the museum is the main library. They stated in the other article that the Torah strolls were removed place in a different location, and I'm assuming it was the main library. So if this is the main library, why wouldn't Lucia be part of the main library, being that it is the oldest found skeletal of South America, and maybe the entire Americas combined. Egyptian artifacts including a 2,700 year old painting. So you're telling me Egyptian artifacts found in the Americas. Hmm. Say what? It all comes together in America. Everything's linked right back to here. The Mecca of history. Also, the Chichilian mummy, it was at least 35,000 years old. Mummified ancient people found in South America. Mummified. This was, this was not an ancient Egyptian thing. A lot of the things that we think start somewhere else actually. Together. Clues to the identity of the first Americans are emerging in rock shelters in the northeast and southeast of Brazil. Archaeologists there have recently unearthed human remains. Prehistoric skulls were found buried in layers of soil 9 to 12,000 years old. They are the oldest skulls in the Americas. And this is the oldest of them all. The skull of a young woman, nicknamed Luthia by scientists. Can she tell us who the first Americans were?
Walter Nevis is a physical anthropologist at Sao Paulo University in Brazil. He's been using a standard and reliable archaeological measure, the shape of the skull, to find out what race she belonged to. He fully expected Luthia to be a mongoloid, an ancestor of the American Indians. But then he fed the measurements into the computer. When we start running the computer and uh, seeing the results, uh, it was amazing because we realized that uh, uh, the statistics, the quantitative analysis we were doing was not showing just people to be mongoloid. In fact, the analysis was showing just people was anything except mongoloid. So who was Luthia? And where did she come from? To find out, the skull was taken to a hospital in Rio de Janeiro to begin the process of reconstructing her face. The first stage was to make a three-dimensional CAT scan of Luthia's skull in order to build a replica. was then given to Richard Neve of the University of Manchester in England, one of the world's leading forensic artists to recreate her features. To me, is a Negroid face that has all the features that you associate with a Negroid face. The um, proportions of the face, it doesn't say anything about it being a mongoloid. Was this then the face of a first American? Her reconstruction is confirmed by measurements Walter Nevis has taken of all his skulls. The first reaction uh, was not to believe in it, but as the results, you know, repeated, repeated, repeated so many times, and the result is exactly the same thing. They are very similar to nowadays Aborigines and Africans, and no similarity at all with Mongoloids in Asia or with American Indians. When I was reading to prepare for this interview, I was quite surprised to see you use the word Aborigines talking about African-Americans. 1860 United States Federal Census. Uh, I just brought up uh, just one of the, the people that was on this list. It says uh, Schedule 1 Free Inhabitants, and I'm not sure what that it says exactly. In county of, it looks like Kent, state of Tennessee, enumerated by me on the 21st day of July 1860 I can't really read what that says but it's a uh, it's a lot of people on this list here and you know it's different ages some young some older um, male, female, doesn't have the races on here at all, and, you know, has the names. Can't really tell, uh, some of them have occupations, it's a few with occupations, but, uh, 
for the most part. Everybody was born in the states. Remember, this is 1860. You know, Tennessee, North Carolina, Virginia, Tennessee, North Carolina. And this person here had real estate. And this is his family here, so I don't know, maybe uh maybe this is actually tribes here. You know, all of these people are you know, freed on this day or whatever. So I'm not sure if these people had been enslaved previously by that person. I can actually read the name off. But uh pretty long list here. Let's see, get a better look. Mary Henderson, seven months. Wow. Three-year-old Lucinda Henderson. Elizabeth Henson. I'm sorry, Henson. So I guess this is the parents and this is their kids. And this is their family, the Porter family here. You see the Nelson family down here. So these are pretty large families. Uh, the Mullen family here. Jackson down here. Bill. I don't know if this is Miss Spelling or Mary Sulan. But it looks like to, to me to be uh, lots of families here. I've Palfy, I've never seen these names before. Elizabeth England. I guess the mother and daughter, same name. Richard England. Sarah England. Kind of odd. Uh, I'm not really sure if, if this is families that came over that's looking for housing, but it said they were in the census here. It said they were enumerated. So it's just kind of. And they were free inhabitants, uh, free people. So I went back to the 1850 census. Um, free inhabitants. You see a few of the same people on here. A few of the same families like the Nelsons. Um, you get a couple of new ones. Uh, Kings. More of the kings. And you see a lot of their occupations as farmer, um, North Carolina, Tennessee, basically the same areas. So then you see Ireland. That's a little different, and uh, you see the surname McLennan. But there's still no races here. You still don't see any races. So you got a, a few people here from Ireland. North Carolina, Tennessee. Surname Scott. McClennan. That must be the Ireland. Hmm. Interesting. So 
So there was a McLennan from Ireland. There it is. M Margaret McLennan, Ireland. So it makes you think, uh, were these people coming, were these families coming over and stationed in a certain area waiting for housing? Ireland, this person actually has real estate worth 4,000. Looked like they were housing quite a few people. North Carolina, this person has real estate worth 800. Occupation farmer. Had a pretty large family of the like King family is pretty large, but it's just it's kind of difficult to to understand because there's actually no races here, so you really can't get a feel for what exactly is going on here, and uh, or any of these people indigenous are. Or all of these people foreigners. I just uh, were raised in the states. You know, it's a lot of uh, younger kids, and these are all free people at the time in eighteen. <laughs> as well.